This is the Build Your Path podcast, where we explore how people get into their careers in the built environment. Today's guest is Kevin Malloy. Kevin is a social impact outreach specialist for Procore Technologies. Welcome on into the Build Your Path podcast, hosted by myself, Matthew Pine. I am with my guest today. Kevin Malloy, and I am a social impact outreach specialist with Procore.org, which is Procore's social impact team. My favorite accomplishment so far is just getting to work with amazing nonprofits, um, universities and colleges, and then trade associations to give them free Procore accounts and get them up and running on it and um, see the the value that the Procore uh, software can provide. Right. So, uh, Kevin, welcome to the show. We appreciate your time. Thanks for having me. All right. So if you want to give a little introduction to our audience and explain a little bit about what Procore does. Sure. Um, Procore is construction project management software, and it has a number of tools for helping manage construction workflows. It's going to connect multiple stakeholders working on a project, like the project's owner, architect, general contractor, and specialty contractors, all together so that everyone has one centralized location to collaborate. And it's also gonna be able to report data and analytics across all tools and projects, which is pretty powerful in terms of helping companies make better decisions about how they're using their resources. So basically it's a one-stop shop for managing construction projects. And the way the software was originally created was a pretty interesting story. Um, Our CEO, Tui Kordamanch, who's still with the company today, was working up in the San Francisco Bay Area and building a house in Santa Barbara, which is about 350 miles away. He was having some communication problems with his general contractor. The project was basically being delayed and cost overruns kept happening. So Tui had that classic, there must be a better way to do this moment. So he ended up building a web-based tool created around Microsoft Project It was designed to help with collaboration and then really started to see the need for something like his software in the construction industry as a whole. And this was back in 2002 when technology hadn't really come to the construction industry to any great extent. So Procore really started to take off around 2010, which was the result of smartphones and better Wi-Fi technology becoming available. And now we have 14 offices around the world and we're the most widely used construction management software in the U.S., and our company's mission is to connect everyone in construction on a global platform. Great. Uh, can you talk a little bit about some of the uh, companies that you might work with? Sure. So we have clients that are doing hundreds of millions of dollars in annual volume. And then we have clients that are doing way less than that. In terms of large, well-known contractors that are running Procore, we have Skankska, Turner, Hit Contracting, Mortensen, Ryan Companies, among others. And then we've recently branched out into the owner's market. So we have a number of Fortune 500 companies that are using Procore to build their own facilities or infrastructure. And then I work specifically for the Procore.org team, which is Procore's social impact team. And we provide nonprofit home builders, universities, and trade associations with free access to Procore and training on how to use it. In terms of the nonprofits we support, we partner with several hundred nonprofit home builders like Team Rubicon, Purple Heart Homes, and Habitat for Humanity. We have a master agreement with Habitat for Humanity International, so any affiliate who wants to gain access to Procore can do it through our team. And then we also partner with hundreds of colleges and universities with programs in construction management, engineering, and architecture to provide free Procore accounts for instructors and their students to use. So students can learn the software before they graduate and get get a leg up on their careers. So for example, we partner with Texas A&M, Clemson, Cal Poly San Luis Obispo, and BYU, some of the powerhouse schools in construction management. And then we also work with about 90 different trade association apprenticeship centers, ranging from the United Brotherhood of Carpenters and Joiners, International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, and the Cement Masons, so that their instructors can teach their apprentices how to use Procore while they're still in the program. And then finally, we work with an amazing nonprofit called the ACE Mentor Program that has regional clubs for high school students interested in architecture, construction, and engineering, and we provide free Procore accounts for a lot of these chapters. It's great to hear that you've uh, so many partners, especially with uh, on the nonprofit side. So, how does your software fit the needs of your clients? So the software definitely evolves over time. Um, we absolutely have to be in tune with the industry and how it's changing in order to continue to add value. 
Uh, we have a saying at Procore that we're construction people doing software, not software people doing construction, which basically means that we're not throwing up random guesses about what features to include. And I would say that over the years, Procore's development has largely been guided by our clients' feedback. So for example, we have a team of about 250 software engineers who are constantly making improvements to the software based on this feedback. One example I can give is that Procore used to uh, not have the uh, capability to do estimating and takeoff, but we recently acquired a company called Esticom, which is gonna give us the ability to do estimating directly within Procore, which is what our clients have been asking for. So the software definitely evolves over time. And then also, I think one of the coolest things about Procore is that it's a platform which means that there's a lot of other software that can integrate with it. Developers can access our open API to build software integrations that connect to Procore, and we currently have over 250 different integrations available. So for example, there's an integration with Bluebeam, which designs drawing markup software. There are integrations with scheduling software with uh, you know, Microsoft Project, Primavera, and Asta Power Project, as well as with drone and site camera software. And the real value proposition here is that Procore can capture analytics and data on all of these individual tech tools that are connected to Procore. So you have one streamlined source of data, or as we like to say, one single source of truth. Over the last 10 years, there's been an explosion in construction technology, which is definitely a good thing, but these tools are usually solutions for only one type of workflow. And when you're using multiple pieces of software, there's no easy way to aggregate data across all of these tools. Procore essentially solves this problem because it can capture the data across everything being used. So I think it's leading to a real revolution in terms of the data that companies are able to leverage and then being able to use these analytics to make better decisions about how to build. So what do you see as some of the bigger needs facing our industry? I think the biggest challenge facing the industry right now is the lack of incoming talent. I think there's been a general feeling among younger students that a construction job isn't really so desirable, which is unfortunate. I mean, when I was in high school, most of my friends were going into medicine, law, or something like that. And I thought that working on a, a construction job would mean that I was out in the field every day, you know, getting sweaty, and frankly, not getting paid very much. And it turns out that this isn't true at all. The construction industry is booming, and there's so many jobs out there that give you the opportunity to do all kinds of cool things. I mean, take building information modeling. If you're working as a BIM manager or a virtual design and construction manager, you get to work with software to, to design 3D models on a project and make sure that all parts of it, from the electrical systems, HVAC, mechanical, and plumbing, are all working in harmony with each other. You get to use virtual reality and augmented reality technology to navigate models and make sure the project is progressing. I just watched a video showing off a new VR technology where the coordination team was actually having a virtual meeting within a 3D model, and it was incredible. So there's really so much you can do with cutting edge technology when you work in construction nowadays. And then there's also some great apprenticeship programs out there that basically let you work and earn a decent wage while you're also taking classes to master your trade and getting the opportunity for one-on-one -on -one mentorship with a company you're apprenticing for. And then these apprentices go on to become journeymen where they get paid more and ultimately a lot of them master the skills necessary to start their own business where they can make a decent living and mentor new apprentices and teach them the skills they need to be successful. And I really wish I had known about these things when I was in high school, because I would have given the construction industry a much more serious look. I mean, I basically was pre-med coming into college, even though I wasn't a math or science guy by any means. And I struggled for two years in classes like organic chemistry until I finally gave up and went into liberal arts. So it was basically two years that I spent struggling because I thought I needed to be a doctor because that's what I felt was a, quote, successful career. And that's what's so cool about what you guys are doing with the building, Build Your Path initiative. You're providing students with the knowledge about all of these great fields to go into in construction, like what each job entails, what people can expect to make salary wise, and all the cool things that you can do in that job. Uh, your career, career resource guidebook is really pushing back on the stereotype that construction is only about field work because it's much more broad than that. And it's great that students have the opportunity to learn about it while they're still in high school. I appreciate you, uh, you bringing up Build Your Path. I mean, it, it definitely offers um, some educational resources as well. Talk about maybe some of uh, Procore's educational resources. So I think we've created some really great resources for educators and students. Uh, we have a full set of curricula developed around Procore's tools. So professors can download presentations on topics like submittals, bidding, RFIs, and then basically have all the inform information available to teach their students about these topics and how they're utilized in Procore. 
We have in-class exercises that professors can use to help reinforce these concepts. And we actually paid an architectural firm to create a sample set of drawings and specs for a fictional business center that educators can use with their own Procore accounts. So they don't have to find these drawing sets or specs on their own. They can basically just plug and play. And then we've also created some interactive construction activities that can be used virtually. So teachers can run them over Zoom or whatever they're using. And the way these work is that students log into a special Procore demo account we've set up, and then they can learn about things like plan reading and building information modeling and how they work in Procore. We even created a building information modeling scavenger hunt where students navigate a model in 3D to find the answers to the questions. It's pretty entertaining. And then we also have a resource called the Construction Expertise Exchange, which is something we developed in partnership with the Associated Schools of Construction. So this is a resource for anyone who wants to explore what other professors from top construction management programs are teaching in their own classes. We have a number of faculty that people can contact who have volunteered to mentor other instructors, and they've all provided things like syllabi, textbook reviews, sample assessments, and case studies, all based around a variety of construction-related topics. So I always advise educators to go there if they're looking to expand their curriculum or teach another subject that they're relatively new to. And then we also have a job board that just launched called the Construction Career Board, where students and job applicants can post their resumes and browse construction jobs all over the US. So I think we have a number of great resources uh, available um, and we've seen a lot of educators um, take advantage of them and uh, implement all that very successfully. All right, so you talked a little bit about some of your virtual resources. Do you also offer any types of virtual training? Yeah, definitely. So on my team, we do virtual training for various organizations throughout the year. Right now, we're working with the National Association of Minority Contractors to donate a certain amount of training sessions each year to their members. And we just finished up several sessions with them over the last few months. And basically, we cover things like using Procore's mobile app, some of the most common tools for that. And then we do a deep dive into the web version of Procore, where we spend some time training on specific tools that are going to be relevant for the audience. We also look at things that like different integrations that are available on the platform. So it's a pretty thorough training session that we hope attendees will walk away from with a pretty solid level of knowledge about the software. And then one other thing I wanted to mention was our Procore certification courses. So these certifications are vid video tutorial courses that teach different parts of the software. And the cool thing about these certification courses is that you don't have to have a Procore account to take them. They're always free and on demand and you can access them by going to education.procore.com. We break these courses down by project roles. So we have one set of certif certifications for a general contractor, one for specialty contractors, and then owners, engineers, architects, and students. So with a student certification, you can learn the fundamentals of Procore, like basic navigation and which buttons do what, along with how to use the most common tools like drawings, submittals, and budget. And then one of the best things about these certifications is that once you're finished, you can actually post your certificate of achievement on your LinkedIn profile just by clicking a button. So basically, it's a great way to learn Procore on your own time. Great. Uh, well, we certainly appreciate your time, Kevin. Uh, is there anything before we uh, get out of here that you would like to plug for Procore that you haven't already mentioned, maybe your blog or your, your website? One thing that I wanted to call out is our free continuing education courses. So these can also be accessed by going to education.procore.com. And these courses are accredited by organizations like the American Institute of Architecture. So people can actually earn continuing education credits for taking them. And we have over 80 courses on topics like green building and sustainability, prefabrication, building information modeling, and all sorts of other subjects. We also have this great series called Data in Construction, which teaches about things like collecting and analyzing data, as well as machine learning and artificial intelligence. So there's really a lot of great information in these courses. And just like the certification courses, these are all free and available to the public. And then the last thing I wanted to talk about was that we have a great virtual talk coming up on December 16th, which is gonna be led by our CEO and a man named Jake Wood, who's one of the founders of Team Rubicon. If you guys don't know about Team Rubicon, they're an amazing disaster response organization based down in Houston. Jake Wood was a former Marine who went down to Haiti after the earthquake in 2010 with his friend who was also a former Marine to lead a medical team. And now today, Team Rubicon is probably one of the most active dis disaster response organizations in the country. And they have a network of over 100,000 volunteers who are largely former military or first responders willing to be dispatched whenever a natural disaster hits. So our CEO is going to be talking to Jake Wood about all the great work his organization is doing, and I highly recommend it.
And you can register for this by going to our website at www.procore.com. Excellent. Well, uh, again, thank you so much for coming on, Kevin. No problem. Thanks for having me. If you want to learn more about Build Your Path podcast or the built environment overall, go ahead and visit buildyourpath.org. Another big thank you to our guest, Kevin Malloy from Procore. Build Your Path podcasts are produced by the Maryland Center for Construction, Education, and Innovation. I'm Matt Pine. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll talk to you soon.